Happy New Year's, everyone. It is now 2021 as of this recording. So I know 2020, you know, it wasn't the best year in the world, but it still has given us not only moments of happiness and reflection, but even when theaters were facing the brink of extinction, we still got some quality films this year, even in, I, we saw it in theaters for the time they were open, or we even caught some movies that were good on VOD. So they changed it up. This time I'm going to be releasing my best films of 2020 first instead of the worst films. You know, just a little positivity. Hi, I'm Mac from Mac Movie Reviews. And welcome to my top 10 best films of 2020. At number 10, we have Wonder Woman 1984. This is going to be a big yikes from everyone who sees this and reads this on Instagram and YouTube. Uh, so I will say I wasn't going to add Wonder Woman 1984 and leave it at 11. But considering we had Birds of Prey this year, which is a hint for the next video, the worst movies of 2020, hint, hint. I'll stick to Wonder Woman 1984. Although I'm planning on doing a solo review for Wonder Woman 1984, it's not inherently a terrible film. It was reminiscent of the old Richard Donner Superman films and how it was campiness. And I do feel like Patty Jenkins was trying her hardest to maybe try a different approach to Wonder Woman, kind of like a more comical, kind of like lighthearted way. But this just, it wasn't bad, but it just wasn't hitting the mark as a sequel with Wonder Woman, which the first one back in 2017 was surprisingly good. But although it has its issues, it's still a fun movie in my opinion to watch. At number nine, I have The Way Back, and I was surprised when I watched this film. I had no expectations of the movie, and I enjoyed it a lot. Ben Affleck's performance in this film was tremendous. I thought he did a wonderful job, and I this may be sort of a comeback role for him after he did, you know, Batman and Batman v Superman and all those movies in Justice League. But I definitely feel like this film will be the one to bring him back maybe as a legitimate actor because he had some great chops in this end. Story was investing as well. It was full of so many emotional tones that hit you all at once i really suggest that you watch a w the way back or is it a way back a way back and it's really like it's on hbo max trust me it was one of the most popular films like streamed through this year and there's a reason for that at number eight i i have i still believe which was the christian uh biopic movie about jeremy camp i believe yeah i, I was gonna say that I, I had no plans to watch this movie but considering my options at the time for watching movies that i kind of wanted to watch something new i had the opportunity to watch this for free and i watched it and i was surprised to say that this was the movie that would leave me in tears i never thought a film about christian music would have me crying near the end and the film isn't perfect it's kind of it does the tropes that a lot of the christian movies like to do like some of the characters are bad and the plot's kind of contrived but the message of the film is about faith and how your testing and faith will be with you even during trying times i thought that was really an, a good message to just spread through a movie and it was a it was a cute film and it will warm your heart so give i still believe a watch it's not that bad trust me it you may think it's the generic christian movie but no you'll actually be surprised Number seven, I have The Gentleman. So shout out to IGM for saying this is one of the lowest rated films of the year. And I think I can figure out why. It's because uh, at first glance, this movie kind of looks like a bad movie, kind of like a low rent Kingsman. But when you go into it with absolutely no expectations, you will be surprised that you actually like this movie. Uh, I really didn't think I was gonna like it when I first watched it. I was like, eh, I'm not really a Guy Ritchie fan. But after watching it, I was like, man, The Gentleman's actually, actually a very, maybe the most underrated movie movie of the year if i being honest with myself it's it, it's like it's a kingsman spinoff but you replace the spies with weed dealers it was fun it was entertaining and it was also a brush of fresh air i kind of hope they make a sequel or a spinoff to this because i think everyone did a good job even charlie hunnam can he needs some more credibility after this let's get him into the uh ghost rider role or wolverine please at number six, I have Tenet. Man, this is depressing that I have to put Tenet at number six. You, I thought that Tenet, when I first saw the trailer, it was gonna crack at least the top five, maybe even be number one, but uh, six place isn't bad. Although I feel Tenet is one of Nolan's weaker films, I do, I will say it was still a decently good film. Although there were some issues, you know, with the plot and the runtime and the sound mixing and everything, 
the acting was good, cinematography was amazing, and the concept of inverted time, I feel like, was not explained well enough, but it did lead to some cool action set pieces in the film that really reminded me of Inception. And like I said in the podcast, if this movie, if Nolan was just cool with just letting this be delayed, or I could say, I'm gonna say it, if it went to HBO Max maybe, I think maybe it would have been a little bit more better received, and it would have made its money back. Because if he pushed it back to 2021, I feel like that 10 it wouldn't have been like one of the major blockbusters to get movies back up and going so i don't know tenet was just it it's not it's good at number six but i just wish it was higher at number five i have class action park so this is one of the few future life documentaries that i can put on this list i was originally going to put uh the last dance on here but class action park fits better in this list because it is a feature length documentary and the last dance is the docuseries but anyway like i said in my review of it earlier this year i was highly intrigued in the research of action park if you don't know action park either you can check out my mini video review i did of the documentary and i did a written review too on instagram i think that the whole subject of action park and how it operated in probably one of the most deadliest theme parks in america i thought that was so cool and to see them go into details with people who went to the park and people who worked at the park it was just very it was very engaging Aging and it opened your eyes up to a lot of other opportunities for research that you did not know about the subject because this documentary focuses more on the founder. I'm forgetting his name right now. I said in the review, but it's just it goes more into depth like his mindset of trying to make this park. And it was really good. I'd say it's an underrated gem on HBO Max, and I highly suggest you give it a watch. At number four, I have Sonic the Hedgehog. Congrats, Sega. You managed to somehow save your reputation of the blue blur himself. The Sonic movie will go down as one of the best video game films of all time, in my opinion. But considering what it had to grow, go through with the nightmare of the first design, which, by the way, please release the first cut of the Sonic movie that has the original design from the first trailer, they made a good turnaround. Uh, it has everything for the OG fans, and it introduces a whole new generation to Sonic as the character because, you know, at this point, Sonic has kind of been a laughing stock, and, you know, it's just he's not well regarded as Mario, as I have to say. But hopefully, the sequel can continue this momentum because. I want to see the blue blur back in the mainstream. Let's do this. At number three, I got Bad Boys for Life. Yes, the number one highest grossing film of 2020 by default. And to be honest, this is my personal contender for Best Picture winner at this year's Oscar, so you can reference back to this video when it wins. So all jokes aside, Bad Boys for Life is an awesome action film. Not only does it keep the element that made the first two films memorable, and good it has a fresh injection of life for those who may not be familiar with the series you know it has been 13 almost 17 years since bad boys 2 came out and this is definitely a good way for people to get into the series and you know it made a lot of money so hopefully they can continue with it with maybe a new generation and sticking with the old generation so you know bad boys for life was surprisingly probably my surprise film of 2020 of what in regards to the higher tier blockbuster action movies at number two i have pixar's soul this was inside out but with soul get it so soul is a beautiful film i'm so glad it came out on disney plus i you know it i feel like that if it was released in theaters it still would have gotten love but it wouldn't have been as successful as it is right now because right now disney plus is completely just crapping on hbo max right now but soul leading the way against wonder woman 1984 this is why soul is number two and wonder woman 1984 is not number 10 but i'm planning on doing a solo review of this and have a lot more to say of it but soul is just just watch it it's a very beautiful film and it may be one of my favorite pixar movies of all time but it will not trump the incredibles but that's not number one my number one film for 2020 would have to be Blumhouse's The Invisible Man. I'm so happy that this film can make it to my number one spot. What made this film so great to me is the sense of stress and tension it was able to convey throughout its runtime. You know, the threat is present due to, you know, the invisibility, you know, Invisible Man. But you will be in the same mindset as Elizabeth Moss's character in this film. Like, you will only know what she would know and learn information that she learns and be constantly paranoid that there's this thing, somebody, person, him, Adrian something just just watching you and you can't do anything about it except we're trying to prove and it's prove you're right with this theory and it's just raising and it's just 
It had a thrilling story, good cinematography, and superb acting. This is why I feel like The Invisible Man is number one on my top 10 list of 2020. If you're a fan of the show, help the channel grow. I want to thank you all for tuning in my video. And here are my Patreon supporters in showing up on the screen right now. If you want to help support the channel, you can always subscribe, donate to me on Patreon. We have three different tiers. Link in the description for the Patreon. So shout out to my Patreons for the month and I will see you guys later. Peace.